Oh, look, looks like Aang knows how to play a woodwind instrument. Who would have thought with him being an airbender and all? Damn, now that I think about it, he could have slotted in perfectly to Iroh's band. You bought a Sungi horn? For music night on the ship. Now, if we only had some woodwinds. Don't we have more important things to worry about? We should be making plans. Even if you do master all of the elements, then what? It's not like we have a map of the Fire Nation. Should we just head west until we reach the Fire Lord's house? Where does this sudden worry from Sokka come from anyway? It's very sudden that he's ultra worried about their time limit. In fact, this is the first time that's even mentioned in over a season. I practice hard every day with Toph and Katara. I've been training my arrow off. Okay, Avatar, chill with the curse word fakeouts. It's funny once in a while, but two episodes in a row, ain't it? We need some intelligence if we're gonna win this war. <laughs> All right, we'll finish our vacations and then we'll look for Sokka's intelligence. Got him again! In this establishing shot, you can actually see the sand sailors that the sandbenders use, along with these weird camel looking things. Hey, that dog looks pretty fucking ordinary. There's probably a word for that, like mundane, usual, regular. Standard. So this is supposed to be a giant reference to Star Wars, right? You've got the Tusken Raiders, Moss Eisley. This guy over here has a fucking lightsaber. One mango, please. These drinks go for one gold each? Those gotta be some pretty good smoothies. No worries. I clean up easy. Does wind just completely dry fabric instantly? I've never really done laundry with an industrial fan, so I don't know. Which of the air temples do you hail from? The Southern Temple. Oh, splendid! Now tell me, what was the primary agricultural product of your people? I like this dude. He's fired up, he found his passion. He's all in, baby! I can get behind a guy like this. What, no Fire Nation? What do you mean, oh, no Fire Nation? There's no anything on this map. This is literally just the desert you're in. According to legend, it was built by the great knowledge spirit Wan Shitong with the help of his foxy knowledge seekers. Oh, so this spirit has attractive assistants, huh? I think he means they look like actual foxes, Sokka. I mean, Sokka's interpretation is more reasonable from the way this guy delivered it, right? Why would you ever think that they're actual foxes from the way he just said that? Sandbenders, shoo! Away from the bison! It's cool that the sandbenders are a whole other culture and can use their bending in really interesting ways. Like they're simulating airbending here. And it's another of course they would moment because of course they would. This world is so fleshed out, dude. I wish Sokka kept this look for a little while longer. It's a good look on him. Aang actually looks at a slightly different interpretation of the library here than what they were looking at earlier. This one seems a little smaller compared to the last one. I guess that's fine. Also at the bottom of this paper, there's this little notch that seems to morph in and out of existence. There it is! Crazy that Toph found it like that. Good eye, Toph. What kind of animal is that? Okay, okay guys, guys, who the, who the fuck, fuck put, 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 put my, my fox, fox on the, on the y, y axis? axis? I say you guys go ahead without me. You've got something against libraries? I've held books before, and I gotta tell you, they don't exactly do it for me. Oh, right. Sorry. Let me know if they have something you can listen to. And now's a good time to bring up today's sponsor. This episode of Overanalyzing Avatar is brought to you by Audible. It's not. It's not actually. I'm not cool enough to be sponsored. Damn, Sokka, where'd you get all that rope? You think this is Zuko's nice-ass rope from last season? Hey, this is some quality rope. Don't worry, buddy. I'm not making you go underground ever again. You could stay out here with Toph. Nice little callback to the Cave of Two Lovers here. Pretty obvious one, but... Gotta mention it. In a few shots here, Momo's arms are colored fully black instead of the fully white that they're supposed to be. I'm Professor Zay, head of anthropology at Ba Sing Se University. You should leave the way you came, unless you want to become a stuffed head of anthropology. Okay, what am I looking at right now? We've got a walrus sheep, a spider bat, and uh, what the hell is even that? Humans only bother learning things to get the edge on other humans. Like that firebender who came to this place a few years ago, looking to destroy his enemy. That's really cool continuity. Zhao had this throwaway line in the finale to last season. I was a young lieutenant serving under General Xu in the Earth Kingdom. I discovered a hidden library, underground in fact. I tore through scroll after scroll. One of them contained a detailed illustration and the words moon and ocean. I knew then that these spirits could be found and killed. And that could have been it, just a throwaway line. But the fact that the gang actually ends up in this same library shows that the story was really fleshed out before they even started making the show. Holy moly, there are some cursed off-model Momo shots in this show, usually way off in the background, but this one's pretty bad. To prove your worth as scholars, you have to contribute some worthwhile knowledge. 
please accept this tome as a donation to your library. First edition. Very nice. <laughs> I love that line. I don't know why. Once she talks like, oh shit, I didn't know you were coming in here packing that kind of heat. I have an authentic waterbending scroll. Paco gave the gang a bunch of scrolls at the start of the season, but this is the very scroll that Katara stole from the pirates way back in the day. Weird kick move and everything. It's weird that they decided to bring all these things down here though, right? Like they thought they were on some Indiana Jones Tomb Raider mission, but they all decided to bring these scrolls and books and stuff. It's a really nice touch that Op and Toph are sitting in the shadow of the tower. Like, of course they would, but someone had to think of that detail. That kind of thing could have just got lost in the process so easily but this show is so clearly beloved by its creators and animators that they really thought of everything that they could. Well, I don't see the way you do. I feel the vibrations in the ground with my feet, but the sand is so loose and shifty makes everything look fuzzy. This is what I'm talking about. Toph is this little unstoppable powerhouse when she's in her element, but because of her unique skill set and drawbacks, something as simple as the environment can keep her from being even a little useful. That makes her such an interesting character that can feel organically weak when the writing calls for her. Toph is such a genius character, man. Hey, look at these weird lion turtle things. Yeah, there are actually a couple references to lion turtles before one shows up in the finale. And this is the first one. I also like how the team has gear continuity. Like I mentioned in the past, Sokka's old bag, but now he's carrying around the new bag that he bought. Little stuff like that can go unnoticed pretty easily. Here's another shot where Momo's arms are black instead of white. It happens a lot in this episode. I'll shut up about it now. Firebenders. They destroyed everything having to do with the Fire Nation. This was probably just Zhao, right? He said he was a lieutenant when he found this place, so he might have had a few boys under his command when he found it. My question is, if Wan Shi Tong throws this kind of fit when the gang figures out the Eclipse, how the hell did Zhao or any of his men make it out of here alive after doing this? Behold, curse no ponytail Sokka. You will never unsee this. This room is a true marvel, a mechanical wonder. It's a planetarium that shows the heavens moving. So this place was said to be built by Wan Shi Tong, but he couldn't have physically built it, right? Like with his wings and stuff? Like he doesn't have hands. Unless he can make complex machinery with some sort of spirit magic, which isn't really how spirit stuff seems to work in this world at all. So that raises the question, who built this? Even if Wan Shi Tong had the knowledge and the blueprints for it, someone had to help him, right? Like an ancient Wan Shi Tong worshiping civilization? Ah, here we go, getting into my weird theories again. All glory to the Owl God. It's literally the darkest day in Fire Nation history. Now. I get it. Something awful happened on that day. I don't know what, but I do know why. Professor Zay in the background just loving life. Look at this dude. Firebenders lose their bending during a solar eclipse. <laughs> Sorry. That makes sense. I mean, think of what the lunar eclipse at the North Pole did to the waterbenders. Yeah, that's a really weird way to phrase that, Katara. It wasn't exactly a lunar eclipse, it was more that a fish died and an entire celestial body had disappeared altogether. It's not like anything was blocking it. You don't understand. If anyone's evil, it's the Fire Nation. You saw what they did to your library. They're destructive and dangerous. We need this information. You think you're the first person to believe their war was justified? Yes. Fuck, this is why spirits are so cool in this world. Your opinions are neither here nor there to them. They are otherworldly and weird and only concerned with their own doings. It's like Ko. What the fuck was Ko even about? I don't know. He had his rules that he followed though, so he wasn't totally alien. And just like that, Wan Shi Tong has this moral code that he enforces also. It's like, play by the rules or face the consequences. Why are the rules the way they are? Fuck you, that's why. <laughs> I told you, I don't want to snuggle. All right, Toph, gonna have to add that one to the old list. Wait, Ang tucked his staff into his little waistcloth. Have we ever seen him do that? He might actually hold on to his staff if he starts thinking like that. And notice this is one of the few times where he actually doesn't lose his staff, because if he did, he would have lost it forever when the library sank. I'm on to you, Avatar writers. Sokka, let's go! But we still don't know when the next eclipse is gonna happen. Don't be stupid, we'll find out later. No, we won't. If we leave this place, we'll never get the information. And come with me to the planetarium. I need cover. Okay, I gotta admit, this kind of steals the whole rising action feel. You know what I mean? They've set it up really well. The temple is sinking and they've got to make it back to the entrance before they get buried alive. Perfect. Great climax. But Sok and Aang turning around here and going back to figure out the next eclipse really steals any sense of urgency. Like, they don't know Toph is out there holding up the entire library. They don't know what kind of timer they're on. So Sokka wanting to turn around right now feels unreasonable. They could have easily just had the part where they figure out the next eclipse when they're in the planetarium for the first time. Then Wan Shi Tong would have found them and then big chasing finale. What would have been wrong with that? Doing it this way adds effectively nothing. Doing it that way wouldn't have changed actually anything. And I think the pacing would have worked out a lot better. This book actually has the exact same cover as the book he gave to Wan Shi Tong. You can't possibly check every single date. I don't have to. 
We just need to check every day before Sozin's Comet arrives. It's like, come on, we don't have that kind of time. Or at least the show's trying to convey the fact that they don't have that kind of time. That's months away at this point. How long are they in here? How long does Toph have to hold this whole building in place? This is a really big misstep for the climax of an episode. <laughs> Thankfully, they show Appa putting up a better fight in a later episode, but here, I feel like any viewer will think that Appa put up a pretty weak effort at best. Your waterbending won't do you much good here. I've studied northern water style, southern water style, even foggy swamp style. Do the people of the foggy swamp really have a recorded style? Like, do they make waterbending scrolls? Do they seem like the kind of guys that would do that? Wait! Professor, let's go! I'm not leaving. I can't. I've spent too long trying to find this place. There's not another collection of knowledge like this on Earth. This is what I'm talking about. This dude is ride or die about reading stuff. Hell yeah, dude, you read those books. In this shot, you can even see Sokka's makeshift boomerang grappling hook crash into the ground. Good thing, too, because if you couldn't, I would have totally said boomerang should be lost with the library. What's weird is that it looks like it's in its sheath here, even though Sokka definitely threw it as a grappling hook without the sheath on it. So, this episode's pretty good for the most part. Everything's really interesting, and for once, it's like an actual full team, full story, front to back. Even in episodes without Zuko and Iroh, we usually have two or three little stories going, but this one is just the whole gang the whole time, as a squad. Other than the op and top stuff, but that's right at the very end. So yeah, I guess that's a pretty interesting little observation. Wanshi Tong is cool, the idea for the library is cool, Professor Zay is a fun character to have around for one episode, and despite me giving Sokka a hard time about it at the start of the video, we did need something related to the main overarching plot eventually. And honestly, this is the start to one eight episode long mission to get info about the Eclipse to the Earth King, so this is a pretty important one. And even though I think the climax of this episode was handled pretty poorly, I still think the episode holds up pretty well. Hello patrons and potential new patrons. If you'd like to be two episodes ahead of the YouTube releases, you can support me on Patreon for just a few bucks. And of course, the link to that Patreon is in the description below the video. Biggest shoutouts of all go to Fritz Sullivan, who is the sole inspiration for over 750 award-winning films. Keegan Scott, who has the brain of Einstein. Literally, he took it from him. Skylos, who actually won his high school 100 meter dash while running on only his hands. And Zumpy, who can pin a fly to a tree from 100 yards away without killing it. Other huge shoutouts go to my other top patrons, Be My Valentine, Code Cannot, Derek Cornwell, DJ Jack, Stu Mutual Aid, Eleonora Rose, Garmer, Glintwalk, Most Super of Snippers, Nicholas Abbott, Flarkler Glass, and Tiago Nascimento. Next up is the desert, and I'm pretty sure everyone likes that one. Well, everyone except, except, except the Ang, I guess.